Hi everyone. So this is the second clip for a chapter one, grade 10. So if you haven't watched my first clip for the chapter one, please go and watch it, right? This is information and communication tech technology. Hi everyone, this is a second clip for grade 10, chapter one, information and communication technology. So if you haven't watched my first clip, please go and watch it, right? So in this chapter, we will be basically starting with 1.2 information system. So before going for information system, what do you mean by a system, right? System is a combination of components that work together to achieve a task, to achieve an objective. For example, our body is a system, right? In our system, we have so many components, digestion system and like that. So they will all work together to live a life, right? So to achieve a target, to achieve a, an objective. So similarly, system means something like that, right? So in information system, we will have mainly three components, input, output, and uh, processing part, right? So uh, the collection of all these components, we call it as an information system. For example, input means um, submitting data for the processing. So in a computer, if you think about uh, keyboard, mouse, those devices are called input devices because they will be used to submit data for processing. So after you do the processing, you will get an output, right? For example, you can use printer, monitor like output devices to get the results, right? So all these things, we call it as an information system. So in an information system, other than this, storing also very important because we have to store the data, right? So when it comes to the system basically what they have to do is they have to take data process them store them and then finally provide the results right so if you think about here input happens you process it and then you output right so if you think about a simple uh, systems like atm machine uh, the input will be you are in inserting the ATM card and then from the keyboard, you will type the pin, right? So then in the back end, it will do the processing. It will check whether the pin number is correct and whether the available balance is there to get money like that. Some kind of processing happens. And uh, now if it is just to check the balance, it will output the balance. So if it's to, if you input some amount to be retrieved, then that cash will come as the output right so this is an example for information system and if you think about fingerprint reader these things basically used most of in most of the organizations to record the attendance right so if you put your fingerprint it will be the input you are uh, giving the data right then in the back end it will be processed it will check who is uh, having this particular fingerprint and will mark attendance for that particular employee. So then information output will be, sometime it will be just a successful message, your attendance is captured like that, or time of arrival, time of departure, these things will be saved against that particular em employee. So attendance will be calculated accordingly. Then comes the QR code, right? Uh, Another example for information system. So, so you may have seen this QR code is very important in this uh, COVID situation. You may have seen most of the organizations are having a uh, kind of a notice saying this is our QR code. So you can uh, use your smartphone and provide that you have arrived for this shop like that. So in the COVID situation in Sri Lanka, we have something like that. To, attend, to capture whether somebody has arrived for that particular shop or the organization like that. So actually QR code is, um, you can use a smartphone and uh, if you are connected to the internet, you can uh, scan 
the QR code and can obtain more information. Sometimes it can be linked to another website, right? So third example for information system is uh, when you are processing business information. For example, in a uh, organization, you will have a lot of data, purchases, sales, income, expenses, uh, losses, profits. So many data can be there. But uh, with those data in just in some sheets won't give anything, right? So you have to process them and you have to put them as information, maybe graphs, maybe reports, maybe some kind of a presentation. So you can use them for the decision making. So for example, uh, if you have monthly income uh, presented in a graph like this, you can see this red color one is having low income. So you can do promotional programs uh, to increase the income of those areas. So here this is about the barcode. You may have seen barcodes, right? In the products, there are barcodes. So in the supermarket at the um, like point of sale, at the that sales girls is reading all these barcodes and uh, billing, right? So it will uh, manage the stock as well in the back end, as well as it will create the bill for you as well. And this is basically ISBN code. You can see this thing in books, right? So each book will have ISBN code. So it will be uniquely identified from in all over the world. So computer is actually used for this processing, right? So it will process the data and will make decisions based on the information, right? So um, now, computer is mainly working for that, but uh, sometimes just creating some information won't help you to make decisions because all information is not suitable for making decisions, right? So information you should have should be with good quality, right? So for example, quality information will have these kind of characteristics. For example, relevancy. So if you have some kind of information, it should be relevant for our requirement. Now, for example, for me, if I go to an interview, if they ask what, what are your academic qualifications, I'm not saying grade one results or at least scholarship is not having any value. Even all level levels is not having any value. Because now with my age, those things are very primary stuff. So I should tell about my degrees, my PhDs, and my MSCs, those stuff. right? So you should know whether this information is relevant for the requirement. Second thing is the completeness. right? So you should uh, have a very uh, spreaded sample kind of thing. For example, now if you are going to calculate uh, per capita income of Sri Lanka, right? If you just take some people from Colombo, if you take just some software engineers, it's not correct. It will not represent the truth, right? So you should get the sample which will contain people all over the country from all the provinces, okay? Third one is accuracy. So in quality information, accuracy is very high because if you have wrong information, you will lead to wrong decisions. For example, if you go to a doctor and tell wrong symptoms or if you hide something, right? Doctor will decide different disease. So he will give medicine based on that. So it's not going to work, right? And the fourth one is timeliness. Remember, information should be always up to date and a value of the information will be reduced with the time right definitely right for example today's weather report will have no value after one month right so you the value of the information will be reduced with the time cost effectiveness very important thing right so we now to uh, get information to collect information organizations have to spend right so if they spend more than the profits they are going to get from this information it's no point of investing right so you should 
identify what are my costs to collect the information and what is I'm going to do with that information. What are my profits I'm going to get with this information? So profit should be higher than the cost you spend to collect uh, these information. Yeah, so that's the, that's the end of this clip, right? Please uh, watch my third clip as well for grade 10, chapter one. Thank you.